Hey there. I am going to get into percussion maps today on this one because uh, somebody asked for it. Somebody in the comments um, had asked. Thank you very much for that. Uh, and if you have any requests for topics, please do put them in the comments. I really do check them out. And percussion maps in Dorico are a bit tricky. Um, you know, a lot of what goes on in Dorico is pretty tricky, and I really hope that my channel's helped out clarify that uh, for a number of you. But percussion maps are unusual because I think the, the paradigm for production uh, with percussion, especially unpitched percussion, is very different. It's not intuitive, right? So let me just cover that for a second because I think it lays out some important context in understanding percussion maps in Dorico. So the... Um, by the way, if there's any interruptions in this video, I'll upload um, I'll upload a backup. So the the thing with percussion maps is that they um, well, let me say a, a regular instrument is spread out along the entire keyboard. A percussion map is well, a percussion kit tends to be like one key, one sound, whereas a violin instrument, for example, is uh, a, a, a violin across the entire range of your keyboard. So with a violin instrument, we just load up the instrument, and the instrument's job is to map our keys to the right sample. But for percussion, you know, if, if the symbol is only on E5, well, then we need to be able to tell Dorico, play E5. So it's a different paradigm when you're setting up percussion than it is when you're setting up uh, pitched instruments like violins or flutes or something like that, or even a synth. So the percussion maps, that's why percussion maps are separated out, and they, they really function very differently from, um, from uh, gosh, expression maps, which are for helping us do, like, articulations and stuff. Okay, so I've got this demo here. Let me take myself off the screen. And um, again, if there's any problems with the uh, playback, I'm going to upload another uh, backup. But let me go ahead and play this for you. It's just a very simple little percussion pattern happening between a, a high and a low wood block, right? Very, very simple. So what's going on here? Well, I've got over here um, in my sign player, I've got this single hits percussion kit, and all of these keys down here, they all represent different sounds. Right, there's a triangle, for example, a little chime. But these are all individual sounds. They're not, um, they're not like, uh, you know, this isn't all a symbol and because symbols are unpitched uh, in, in many cases. Okay, so for me to get this wood block high and wood block low, I needed to identify these two keys. So that is, I, I believe, E5 and F5. So E5 is the low block, F5 is the high block. And I need to put that information into a percussion map. So I go down to, uh, sorry, into my library menu up here, and I go down to percussion maps. And I actually just created my own percussion map. I called it Sign Unpitched Percussion. You can just click on this plus down here to choose to, to select that. And then what happens is you can basically, over here in this drum kit note map, you basically decide, well, which MIDI note correlates to what instrument and what articulation. So articulations might be something where you have, uh, for example, um, a drummer and they're playing left hand and right hand. Sometimes you'll have samples for left hand, right hand. You could have, you know, these are both snares, but this is snare left hand, this is snare right hand. And you can set up, use playback techniques to differentiate those between, you know, a felt mallet and a wood mallet, something like that. Um, but basically, you have to go through, if you don't see these, it's, it's you know, if you were to create your own percussion map from scratch, you wouldn't see these. You'd need to click Show All, and then this gives you all of the MIDI notes, right? So this is from 0 to 127, from C minus 1 to G9. Now, what I did was I figured out ahead of time, and you can either figure this out by trial and error, or you can look it up in your manual. 
but I figured out that E5 was this and F5 was this. Then you go into, you select uh, a note that you want to configure and you come down here and you'd say, you know, this is my, uh, my name, which, you know, could be something that helps you uh, remember easily what you're doing. The instrument, this is literally basically the name of the instrument that is in your setup, in your Dorico setup, the instrument that you added. So let's say that I uh, wanted, um, I don't know, a cajon. All right, so that, it, in other words, this percussion map is looking for now uh, information coming from the instrument cajon, if I had added that to my Dorico project. Now, under techniques, generally for unpitched percussion, I'm going to go with natural because uh, it's going to be the default every time without setting up any, any additional things. So these are the main information that I need. Now, key switches, some percussion libraries will have key switches, and they will um, enable you to configure the sounds even further. In this example, I don't need any key switches. Then I hit apply, and you can see that it shows up right there. Now, if I wanted to remove this, uh, let's say that I wanted to actually move this from F sharp 5 to F sharp 6. Um, then I hit clear, and then I have to go down to F sharp 6 and type that information in again. Okay. Then when you've, you've put in the information you want, you can always just see just the ones that are in use. Now, I do want to cover um, kind of a, a picky detail here that's really important to be aware of, and that is that um, when you are... Uh, configuring these things to specific MIDI notes like E5 and F5, you need to know um, if your setup, if your um, library is thinking of C3 being middle C or C4 being middle C. Unfortunately, there's some inconsistency between, say, Cubase and Dorico and Contact and other libraries, and you've got, like, private library manufacturers. So... Occasionally, what I find is that I configure this, I, I'm pretty sure I got it right, but then when I look at my little keyboard, and I'll show you here, you know, like over here on my sign player, I'll see that the key that's being triggered is like a whole octave lower. That's because, you know, I was looking at uh, C4, but the instrument is mapped to C3 being middle C. So you do need to know what, what is middle C. And just if you set this all up and uh, it doesn't work, just bump it up an octave or two and that'll resolve the problem. So it's a little tricky. But the nice thing is once you get these things set up, you know, they're there forever. So let me show you how we go about uh, applying this map. So we're going to go... Uh, once we've created our percussion map, and you know we've got over here in our track inspector, we've got the instrument loaded. What we're gonna do is hit the cog for the endpoint setup. That brings us this window, and we can see woodblock high. And we need to go to the uh, percussion map column here, and we need to double click, and then you can see all your percussion maps. You select the percussion map that you made, and that now is going to uh, make those notes match up. So that's it in a nutshell. Now when, you, when I play this, you'll see over here how those keys um, are triggered. You can see E5 and F5 being triggered back and forth. So there you go. There you have it. That's basically what you need to know for uh, creating your own percussion maps. Again, be careful about the C3, C4 thing. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. And please like the video if you uh, got something out of it. And please subscribe. It really helps me to surface these when I have positive engagement from viewers on YouTube. Please leave uh, comments, but also suggestions for anything that you want me to cover. I'm happy to cover uh, topics that are of interest to those following the channel. And uh, I look forward to the next time. I'll see you later. All right. Bye.